Today I want to show you how to do a snapshot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by setting up the snapshot. Alright, you've got your main screen. Of course you hit enter. And then you hit uh, diagnostics. Scroll down to the car. Year, obviously. Make. Power train, engine size, body, that's the manufacturer. You go down to snapshot and that's, now I'll ask you what you want to snapshot. And now it's going to ask you how to set up your manual trigger, meaning you press the button. You can also set it so that if a diag any diagnostic trouble code comes up, it will go ahead and start the, the movie. And then you can set it up for a single, a specific DTC to start the movie. So if you have a car that's triggering m multiple codes, you can set it for a single code instead of any. And then trigger point, in other words, what is it going to record? And right now it's set to record center, meaning the center of the recording. So it's actually going to record it but not really record it until you activate it and then it's going to record all those previous frames plus the frames moving forward okay and then you can go ahead and begin to record your snapshot and now we've got we're standing by meaning it's starting to record the information and then trigger I'm going to move over to the on-ramp now of a highway and we're going to start the movie then. Okay, so now I'm getting up onto the highway. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the trigger. Now I'm recording the data stream and what's going on. And this will continue to record until either it runs out of data or I stop it. One of the two. Okay, I'm now cruising at about 63 miles an hour on the highway. See all my sensors running for that data stream. down because this car is merging. Now if there was some kind of a hiccup, I would feel it. Now what you would normally do is if there was some kind of a drivability issue and it was intermittent, you would drive it under the conditions and then when you felt it, that is when you'd hit the trigger button. Okay, now as you see it's recorded and it's, it's now saving all the information. Now we'll go back and we'll go through the snapshot on the scan tool and I'll show you how you can graph it out. All right, right after you make the recording, it's going to give you the option to look at it then, but you want to go someplace safe to look at it. You don't want to do it out there on the road. It's unsafe. Uh, pull off the road or go someplace safe if you're going to do it on the road or even better, go back to the shop and take a look at it okay so basically we're back at the home screen if I want to look at a recording that's been in, the, in there and it's already captured onto the 232 device the uh, 32 megabyte PCM CIA card you will go to view captured data you're gonna have the option of two of them because it can, it can record and store two of them and you hit enter and then you hit Continue. That was, that was just telling you how it was triggered and that I manually triggered it myself. It's giving me my zero frame of data, which was where we started the, the event. Okay. Now, if you want to, and the best way to do it is to plot it. So you hit plot, and then you select the parameter that you want. 
I want. Engine RPM, you can select up to three. Mass airflow and TP sensor voltage. Okay? And then you can go ahead and accept. Okay, now it's going to plot it out for us. Okay, so this is our trigger frame right here, zero. All right, this is showing the middle of the screen. This is showing us our data for the frame we're looking at. This trigger frame brings us right back to this point anytime we move through the movie. So if we want to, we can move through the movie. And this was, of course, as I was getting on the highway, because that's when I hit the button. And I can then hit move the movie, and I can go frame by frame by frame. Now, the thin line is the throttle position sensor. Okay, so that's this line right here. The dotted line is the mass airflow sensor. And the thick line is our engine speed. And we can move through and look and make sure that everything is even. Now if you have a trigger, you set your trigger event when you felt something happen in the car, and this is cruising and you can see things going up and down. And this is when I came to the stop. Oh, well, that's when, that, yeah, that's right, we had to slow down because the car was getting on, right? And then shortly after that, we had to get off the highway, and that's when it stopped. So that's what that was. That was me slowing down right there. Because you can see I got off the throttle. The TP sensor in the throttle dropped out. On the TP, the TP in the mass airflow dropped out, and the engine speed stayed up. Okay, and that allows you to go through the entire data. Now, if you had something going on, I just hit the, the trigger frame, which brought us back to zero. If you had something going on where the, the vehicle bucked or lurched or had some kind of drivability issue, you would hit the trigger button to start the movie when you felt that event. Because what you can do is you can go previous to that, and you can see what happened. Now, let's suppose our, our TP sensor dropped out during the event. And then, after the TP sensor dropped out of the event, you then saw, after that spike, you saw another spike drop, which would be the engine speed. Well, what happened first? I lost my throttle position sensor first, and then my engine RPM. So, obviously, something happened. It wouldn't go like that. It would just drop a little bit. But, your, let's suppose your TP spiked down, and then your RPMs dropped down a little bit. Well, your RPMs dropped out a little bit because your TP dropped. The, the car thought, the engine computer thought you, you put your foot off the gas, but you didn't. So it reacted by taking away fuel, so it lost RPMs, okay? So that would be your event of what caused you to cause that drivability buck. Okay, so then you would look into problems with the throttle position sensor. And that could be connections, circuit, wiring, or the sensor itself. Okay, and you can go back quite a bit quite a bit because this is way before I started that movie when I got up on the highway this is my trip to the highway from when I first set it up this is where I set it up before we got to the highway way before we got to the highway okay because I set it up in a safe location I was parked I was off the road not on the road not in a dangerous situation where I could get hit by a car and I set it up and then I set it up so all I had to do was hit the trigger which is dangerous enough because remember, I'm not just trying to hit the trigger. I'm trying to hold the video camera at the same time and hit the trigger. So then, at that point, I then hit the trigger. All right, anytime you want to go back to the center of the movie with, or the trigger frame, you just hit trigger frame and you go right back to the center. All right? Now, don't stop watching the video yet because the next thing is I'm going to put the data on a PC so we can graph it out and get a better view that way. All right, so don't think the video's over yet. Put the little bar down to the status on the bottom. You can see I'm not quite done yet, alright? So just hang on, and we're going to do that next. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to take the information from the scan tool. And bring it over to the computer so you can get a better view of it. 
Okay, you're going to go in and test the web. You're going to go to snapshot. You're going to start the snapshot. It's going to download it from the internet. You're going to upload from handheld. Check 2, OK. Now it's going to start to communicate with the scan tool. Looking at the scan tool's snapshot recordings to see if there's any on it. then gives us the choice of which ones we want. We want the later one because it's the last one we did. Click OK. It starts to download it from the tool. You can see what it's working on the scan tool. Whenever it's connected to the RS-232 it'll always do some funny graphics when it's uploading or downloading information. You can see it's almost on the scan tool. Okay, and there it is. There's a snapshot we took. Okay? Now, just like on the scan tool, this little button right here is our trigger frame, which brings us back to zero. Okay? Our current frame is zero. We can go forward frames. We can go back frames. And then by pressing the trigger frame button, it goes back to zero. You can hit play forward, and you can see it plays forward. You can hit play back, and it plays back. This stops it. This will go to your first frame. This will go to your last frame. Okay? Now, Suppose you want to graph it out. There's two ways you can graph it out. Up top here, there's one that gives you three graphs. And that'll put the three graphs over here. And that's kind of sort of like doing it on the scan tool. This one right here gives you way more options. It gives you six graphs. Okay? So you can select engine speed. Let's select mass airflow sensor. Let's select Raw position sensor. Let's select map sensor voltage. Let's select GR position. And last but not least, we'll select miles per hour vehicle speed sensor. Okay, we'll click OK. Now you see it's graphing them all out. Red is engine speed, it gives you the numbers we're at at this current frame. Green for mass airflow, blue is throttle position sensor. Uh, this aqua color here is map sensor, purple is EGR, and this yellowish thing is vehicle speed sensor. Now we have kilometers an hour, we can switch that by hitting that, and now we're at miles per hour. Okay, and we can use the same controls. We can Hit this, which goes to play. We can hit stop. We can go back to our start frame. We can go all the way back to our beginning, because don't forget, when we recorded, we recorded before we hit the trigger. So if it's a drivability problem, you hit that button when you feel it, the problem, and you'll record the situation before the trigger. Okay, now you can watch where we're at. And you can see we have a lot of frames here. We have over 600 and... Well, it's like 700 frames, isn't it? Of information here. Very powerful tool. Okay, now we took the test drive, so we kind of know what we were doing. If we look at our throttle position sensor, we know what our fit was doing at the time. Okay, and this is our... Uh, position sensor 
down here, and this is, I thought it was the blue one. So you can tell what we were doing. We're getting close to our zero. Okay, now we're on our zero frame, so we know we're on the highway. We know we're cruising on the highway. You can see our speed getting up there. There's our speed right here. It's only 35 miles an hour. Okay, there we go. 45, 46, 47, 49, 50, 55. You know, it's a good way to keep track of the data. You know, if we had a drivability problem, we'd see which one of these dropped out when it wasn't supposed to. If our throttle position sensor is steady, but our mass airflow or map sensor dropped, then we know there'd be a problem, and vice versa. If we knew we were driving steady, and our throttle position dropped, then we know that's the problem. It's just a good way to keep track of everything. All right, and that must have been when we, when we slowed down because of traffic, and then I accelerated again. This map sensor shot up. And then this is where we came to our stop. And then that's when the movie ended. Okay? Now, if I ever wanted to return to the the other screen where it showed the numbers, you just click on it and then it'll go automatically return to the numbers. So what you could do is you could go and display it. Let's go back to our trigger frame. Now we can play it. And now let's suppose we see something. We see something going on here. And we know it's our we know it's our event, because that's when we hit our trigger so we can hit stop. We could then go like that and now we can see all of our scan tool data during the events. Okay, and we can go back and forth. Say, so, hmm, gee, maybe something dropped out when it wasn't supposed to, or, you know, looking for when, when the occurrence was. And you should find the occurrence by RPMs, miles per hour, you know, whatever your drivability problem is. If you're getting a bucking, you should get some kind of fluctuation on your RPM. If you're getting hesitation, you should see what's not reacting. Okay. Now, if you want to save it, this allows you to open a file. This one allows you to save a file. And when you go to close, it'll ask you if you want to save it. So you can hit save. Type in a file name, and let's say test drive. And just click save. Now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and open it again. So now you can go ahead and store as many snapshots as you want on the scan tool as long as you save them in the computer. Okay? Well, that's it for taking snapshots. Uh, enjoy and thank you for watching.